Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Big Seven. Seven Street Up. Families. How y'all been? Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank seven you, is you. independent. Yes. So yes. you're independent now. I am. You got tired of Atlantic? No. Listen here. It's not a tired of them. I love them. They were mm-hmm. amazing. I learned a lot of shit, but I mm-hmm. love being independent. Mm-hmm. I keep learning more and more things every day, and I can apply, you know, all of the years that I was at Majors to the shit now, so it's been good. So what made you decide to leave and, and, and go independent? Um, I think it was a number of things, but I think for me it was just growth. You know, I have gone through so much over the last couple of years. You know, I lost lost my uncle to cancer that like shook my whole life. Um and I just wanted I wanted to be able to express myself however I wanted to express myself. So you First know. of all, we being so disrespectful, how are you? I'm amazing. You good? How did you cope I'm with good. the pandemic? Um Man, where do we start? Um, I think for me, some days I was happy. Some days I was a little lonely. Some days I was a little angry. Some days I was, you know, I, I had to develop. And I've been doing it for the last, you know, two years anyway. Mm-hmm. But I really had to, like, lock into uh, setting my days. So I, I made a, a routine of waking up every morning early before anybody can mm-hmm. all the phone calls come in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Wake up every morning, watch my sermons, go outside, meditate, stretch, write down what I want to do for the day. Like, it was, you know, I feel like I, I really locked into a routine in the pandemic. So. I saw you in the kitchen a lot, too. Girl, you know, <laughs> you know what? I feel like I kind of lost my touch. Because you know how in the beginning of the pandemic, we was all cooking a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And, like, I feel like my chops was up. Eating he- Well, I wasn't eating healthy. Girl, I ate so crazy. Mm-hmm. I really did. I ate crazy. But, um, you know, it was, it was good. Do you have nobody to cook for? I mean, my friends, you know, mm-hmm. my girlfriends will come over. Some of my guy friends will come over. You know, we chef it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you also got COVID at one point, too. I saw when you when you got diagnosed with COVID. How yeah. was that for you? You know, it was crazy because a couple of days before I knew, I felt terrible. I couldn't lift my head up off the pillow. Really? No, I could not. And I didn't, I, you know, I, I thought that it, that was a little weird, but only lasted one day. And then I ended up having to get tested because someone on my team got COVID. They're like, hey. You should go get tested. Got tested, but then for the duration of it, I didn't feel bad. I felt okay, you know. I was going to ask you, independent. So you independent with an independent label, or are you doing everything totally yourself? No, I'm at E1. Oh, so you're at E1. I'm at E1. I love them. Shout out E1. Um, it's been great because they uh, they allow me to do me, um, and then they have a really great team over there, too, so we bounce a lot of things off of each other, so... It's cool. When you say allow you to do you, does most labels, like let's say Atlanta, do they say, hey, we need a radio record, and E1 just says, just give me an album? Like, what's the difference when you I, say do you? Well, I think that with majors, you know, they, they and they're very great at what they do. Mm-hmm. They have so many more people on their staff that are, they're, they're designated for every single, you know, piece of your your image and of your life. And, you know, how does your hair look? How does your clothes look? How do you want, how do you want your visuals to look? Like, they have somebody for everything. And I think that now being independent, you know, it's a smaller group of people. But and it honestly, it 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 requires me to wear more hats. But I like wearing more hats. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I've learned more from wearing more hats. So, you know, I get to, you know, really, really dive into my visuals and write my treatments and co-direct with my directors mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, just come up with like cool shit with my team, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, the new album is Junkin' Words and Sober Thoughts. So yeah. let's talk about this because you write your own music. Yeah. And so I listen to some of these songs, and I'm like, now what was going on? Girl. When she wrote this. <laughs> now, of course, you know, I love the song you have out with Bia right now, Nasty Girl. Thank that is you. my joint right there. I even Thank love you. how it just even starts and comes in. Thank so you. So tell me about writing that song and what was going on. Um, well, Nasty Girl is just a nasty ass record. You know what I mean? It's very sexy, it's very confident, it's very like, you know, to be a grown ass woman and know what it is that, you know, what you want when you want it. So it came from, um, you know, just a couple of little sexy nights that I've had and I wanted to write about Excuse it. me? Yes. <laughs> Seven. I can have sexy nights, Charlemagne. She's grown. Thank you. Dr- drunken words and sober thoughts, what yeah. does that mean? Well, you know, when you really, when you normally hear drunken words, sober thoughts, what naturally comes to mind is, oh, you know, somebody had one too many and now mm-hmm. they just, you know, spill an IT. For me, it took on a different meaning. For me, I feel like, um, especially over like the last couple of years, you know, you can be under the influence of a multitude of things, you know, under the influence of love and mm-hmm. lust and anger and jealousy and heartbreak and all of these things. And I didn't want to um, I didn't want to box myself in. I didn't want to tell myself you have to only sing about this thing 
because I feel everything. You mm-hmm. know, we all do. We're not the same people from day to day. We feel more though because we're Kansas. We, come on now. That's a fact. No, that's some real shit. No, Kansas like, feel everything. Mm-hmm. Everybody's energy. Yeah, and I used to honestly for a minute, I used to kind of feel bad about them. Like, yo, emotional ass. Like, <laughs> sit your cry baby ass down somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, I started to realize it's a superpower. Absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing. But you just got to be aware of like who your energy goes up around and who your energy goes down around. Yes, sir. That's the biggest thing I learned. Yes, Who's your sir. energy go up around, Charlamagne? Okay. Y'all so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you. Are you ever worried about people judging you? Why he blush when I wink at him, though, Seven? You did. saw that? I saw, you saw that, right? That cheek right there got a little red. It got a little red. Seven, do you ever get worried about people judging you about what you write since it's so about your life and everything that you've mm. been through or talk about? Well, no, because all of everything I write is it's not always about strictly just my life. You mm-hmm. know, I have amazing girlfriends who live amazing lives mm-hmm. and we have amazing conversations. Mm-hmm. You Why know, you look at ye? <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, OK, well, you Let- know what I mean? Like, it's well, because it's, I think that that's a part of it, especially for me, for women. I like I, I, I like to write for y'all, too. But I like it when women can listen to my music and relate to it in so many different ways. So I take from my conversations, from my friends and from my life and from whatever. And um, so, no, if I feel like, you know, do I get worried about that? No, nah, I can't because I write so that, you know, there are a lot of people who don't know how to express how they feel. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to say I'm sorry. They don't know how to say you hurt me. They don't know how to say so much. So when I write, I'm writing for them. Like, use these songs to tell somebody how you feel. You know? And you have some fun girls' nights that Girl. I'm sure you have some... Great conversations. Mm-hmm. And acting like she wasn't there for, for a lot of them. <laughs> well, we haven't there. had a chance to have a good girl night in a minute. We're actually long overdue. No, we, I was in L.A. with you. Yes. We had a good... We had a good... Oh, that... See, that's what happened, too. When we get together, we be drinking tequila. I don't know if I get about our day. nights. Yesterday, Yee posted a video of... Um, her and Justina Valentine. What were y'all doing, Yee? Oh, we were doing lip service. All right, and what were y'all doing in the video on your story? Um, we were talking about eating bananas and the proper way to do it. So she had a, bana- a fake banana in her oh. hand, and she was going like she was... Yeah, exactly. So I don't follow oh, for a day. Eating a banana? I have a picture of you eating a banana. That's actually no, when you... you <laughs> no, were stroking when a banana. Evie calls me, that's the picture that pops up. Is him uh, eating a banana. Oh, that's so Christ. cute. <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> I'll post that for you guys. But no, so what I wanted to ask you, right? Mm-hmm. You are like a girl. You have a lot of female friends and other artists in this business who are yeah. women. And you definitely embrace a lot of people. Do you ever... Have you ever gotten stabbed in the back? Ooh. You know what? I won't say stabbed in the back. But I I did, I lost a friend recently, and I, I'll be very honest, it really kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, because I take my friendships with my girlfriends very seriously. So what happened? Um, it was weird. It was, it, it came up to where she ended up telling me after the fact that she had felt some type of way for a few months, and I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me the first time a little you felt that way? Or- I, I don't I don't put I don't I don't put that word on my friends. I don't I don't think that she has any reason to be jealous. She's very successful, beautiful, she's amazing. Mm-hmm. But um I just I, I'm very transparent with my friends. If if there's ever an issue that we have, you know, like let's talk about that shit up front, like the second that you feel it. You know what I mean? So, you know, you know how we are. We, we I'm very like that, very much like that with my girlfriends. So you think it's done done with her? Um, I don't I don't ever count any anything out. Mm-hmm. No relationships. You never know, you know. God work in mysterious ways. So did but, you end it or did she end it or was um, it mutual? Well, I will say we did end up having a conversation and um it was a very mature conversation and we decided to, you know, we'll go our separate ways and I wish her the best, you know. Wow. Change your, yeah. change my mind. Yeah. Oh what is that record about? Mm. That's the baby making record. That's a sexy ass record. <laughs> um shout out to Business Boy. He is absolutely amazing. Um, Change My Mind is basically about being really, really comfortable with somebody enough to maybe try a few things that you didn't think that you would try before. Oh. Yeah. It's that, it's that, okay. it's that level sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it, it, in whatever that is, in whatever fashion that is for whoever, you apply that to, you know. Have what, you haven't, yeah, what haven't you tried? What haven't I tried? Um, I haven't tried anal. I haven't. I haven't tried anal. What mm-hmm. we talk? What was the other thing? We said something else the other day. Threesomes. Um, I haven't had a threesome. Mm-hmm. No. Have you found that person yet that you'd be willing to try different things with? Um, I found pieces of that person in a few different people. You got to patch it together. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, filling it out. So how do you know that's the person you want to try something new with? 
Like, if it's not your um, dude, dude, and y'all just having some fun, why does he get those perks? Well, if his penis is small, then you can put it in the try <laughs> anal, but don't do it if it's too big. Really? Okay. Yeah. Is that advice, G? Well, yeah, I would think. That's what small <laughs> penis is. That's like... You can't take back it. the advice you just gave you. That, <laughs> you said that very confidently, yeah, OG no, wisdom. Listen, just don't you feel. let him, OG if it's little, not, you let listen, him do it. My, listen, don't you guys agree? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you would think that if it's a, you know, something smaller, it would hurt less than right. something larger. You would think. Yeah, like mm-hmm. a finger penis. Right. If it's, penis is but I don't, want the, I don't want the finger penis for the rest of no. the acts. That, but maybe <laughs> if I try it, you know. What the hell is a finger penis? Like something that's, come on now, Charlemagne. I don't know what a finger hold penis up, is. Hold up, hold up, hold hands. up your fingers. And now look in your pants. That's a finger penis. Oh, you that's mean like hand, the side of your finger? finger? Yeah. yeah. No, that's not, have, that's not that. cute. Nah. Mm-hmm. That'd, that'd be cute. wild. So you mean like everything, like it looks just like this? <laughs> like the length and, you know what I'm saying? What's the width and everything? That's horrible. I mean, that's horrible. yeah, that's how we You would leave him. Exactly. <laughs> Horrible. What do you do with that? No, what do you, I don't, what exactly. Do you do with that when that pops That's out? how we what, feel. What, what am I supposed to do with Finger this? penis. God, that part. I never heard. That sounds wild. That's hurtful, That's man. That's super disrespectful. Yes, though. it is. It's not hurtful. hurtful. Finger penis. It's disrespectful. No finger penis. All right, but let's talk about the other song because you've had a couple of singles. Guilty. Uh, yeah. Now, that song. It's my baby. That's is a single? little, uh, yeah, risque. Okay, you do yeah. have um, ASAP Ferg and Chris Brown on that song. Mm-hmm. But that is about you being in love, but not with the person who you're with. Did that really <gasps> happen to you? Seven. First of all, you're going to quit acting surprise. Listen here. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, guilty. Actually, I don't, you know, I, like I say, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I don't always write all of my songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If a song is a great record and, um, and it gets sent to me, I'm going to cut it. It's fire. So guilty was actually sent to me from Chris's cousin, Spice. So shout out, Chris. Shout out, Spice. Shout out, Ferg. Um, but he sent that to me in a batch of like seven records, mm-hmm. and for for one, I fell in love with the um, with you know, with the James Brown sample, Big Payback. Like mm-hmm. I've always just loved that sample. My granddad loved that sample. We got a VHS tape of my granddad dancing to that, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always loved that. And then I I like when records like spark conversations, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Guilty is one of those ones. Like I I think that you know, it's that's a real situation where you got somebody you may. You may not even understand why you rock with them and why you fuck with them so hard and heavy, but you do. You know what I mean? And you, you know. Has may that not... happened to you, though? You, you um, with somebody, but you're in love with somebody else? Mm, or you want to be with somebody else? Yeah, that's happened to me before. Sheesh. Ouch. Yeah, it's happened to me before. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've definitely been, like, in love with somebody and thought about somebody else, for sure. Do you think sometimes, like, uh, in, in, in relationships with men and women, we often confuse what it is we're feeling. Like, you and that person may just be meant to be super-duper cool. Right. But sometimes we just register it as, I must be attracted to this person. No, right. y'all might just be You never cool. know the reason for the attraction. Mm-hmm. It could be some, It could be work-related. Mm-hmm. It could be romantic. It could be, you know, maybe that person, maybe they'll understand you in a way that nobody, it doesn't mean you're supposed to be with them. You know what I mean? That's but, right. Because you know. there's a difference, right? I think we always say, we hear the word attraction, we automatically yeah. think romantic sexual but no you might just gravitate towards a person because of their energy yeah energy is everything the energy is everything what about do you mind being with a guy who you know is dating other women hmm do i mind being you know what do i mind i i would be lying if i said it wouldn't make me feel some type of way Mm -hmm. to know that you know because when you're not with me who you with you know what i mean i'm i'd be lying if i said i didn't feel some type of wouldn't feel some type of way about it but um i think that i mean Honestly, in the beginning, when you first start dating somebody, it's kind of like that anyway. You don't know who they're talking to. You know what I mean? Until until things get to a certain point and a certain place where it's like, hey, so I don't really want you spending that much time with other people. You know what I mean? I think then you had a conversation and be very honest about it. But... Um, would you want to know, know what he's doing in the beginning? Like, if you, would you want him to tell you, like, oh, what'd you do last night? Oh, I had a date. Oh, nah, I don't want to know that. Mm-mm. Do you want to know somebody's history or who they dated before? I would, is that important? I would want to know. I don't want to know your body count. Mm-hmm. None of my business. Don't want to know your body count. Um, and I don't really want to know who you dated before. Unless I got to sit up Unless here and be circle. in my, yeah, if they're right. like in my vicinity and I got to really deal with them. Nah, I don't really care. We all have a, we all have lives before the people that we end up being with. So mm-hmm. it's like, no. And in the industry, it's easy to get caught up in them circles, right? It's very easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a small world, especially our, it's super small. So you know, I you know, I don't I don't really get caught up in that. I'm not gonna trip if like, you know, we out somewhere and I, you 
You, we run past your ex. I don't really care like that. No. No, you have, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. No, I'm saying you have a, a song. I, this title is very confusing because I don't know what this <laughs> song could possibly be about. Tell Wet me. Dreams? You know what, God damn mm-hmm. it. Listen here. <laughs> Wet Dreams um, is featuring Jeremiah. Shout out Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. And thank God for Jeremiah because that's really like my real friend in real life. So I'm just happy that he's okay. Um, but Wet Dreams is, man, shout out Business Boy again. He produced that. It's, um, man, it's, uh, it is what it is. It's about, um, well, let's start. It starts off, it goes, don't know what your plans is. I don't give a fuck about what your plans is. If I hit your line, will you answer? Whatever it is, you better cancel. You know, I was thinking maybe we can fall through Mm. so I can put this pussy on you. I know it feels good for the both. You know what I mean? Mm. Feel good for the both of us. (laughs) So it's like, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. You know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, you know, it is what it is. When yeah, you that, got somebody, that don't sound like a dream, Seven. That's not like the reality. <laughs> it may, it may reality. listen here. It may be a dream to somebody. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It may be a dream to somebody. Now you've been wanting to put this album out for quite some time. We've yeah. seen a lot of drunken words, sober thoughts, posts. Yeah. So why is now the right time? And what were some of the delays for mm. you? I think well, I think now is the right time, and I say that I I always operate. Everything is in God's timing for me, first and foremost. That's right. Everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, for the last you know three years, it's I would people would like to you know they like to say they think that I've been strictly just working on my album for three years. I just I had to live my life. You know what I mean? I I lost my um, my grandfather to cancer a couple years ago, and I wasn't there when he took his last breath, and that bothered me. Mm-hmm. So with um, my uncle, my uncle got sick three years ago. I was like, oh, that's never gonna happen again. So I I spent a great deal of my time home, you know, on the on on the floor next to his bed, you know, watching sermons with them in the like I I refused, and so I was I was there until he took his last breath. Mm. So I spent a lot of time at home with that, and even in between that, because I love writing and I love recording, I'm never gonna not be working. So. I just kind of allowed myself to write whatever you feel that day and not think about, oh, it has to be a radio record or it has to be mm-hmm. like this. So, um, you know, that's honestly why what, that's what that's what took so long. And I don't even like to say so long. You know what I mean? That's just I had to live my life and, and take my time and um, be comfortable and be good with myself. And otherwise, the it was the music wasn't going to turn out the way that it should have you know what i mean you can feel that in music you, you can, feel pressure to to yeah. to do music faster because it seems like people don't sit with nah, music as long i don't and my team probably hates that about me <laughs> but um no i don't i think that music is music music people act like music creates itself Mm. It's like music don't create itself. Like think about there's a reason why when you hear songs, they make you feel some type of way because somebody had to feel some type of way to create it. Mm-hmm. So if, if you don't allow yourself to live and breathe and go through shit and get your heart broken and all time. You know what I mean? You can't. I don't I don't like to think that way. Oh, I got to hurry up and get people music. Nah, when it comes, it's going to come and it's going to be my authentic feelings and hopefully you like them, you know what I mean? For for artists, right? Yeah. Does have screaming eliminated to need to write a radio record? Um, what is that I, nowadays? I feel like it has. Yeah, I feel like it has, and I think that that's. I, I first of all, I love radio. Don't ever get that twisted. I love, love, love radio. Um, but I love, I love the freedom that streaming has given that's artists. Right. I think that that is beautiful because a lot of times when you're at a major or whatever, any kind of label, and they're pushing. Um, everybody's record is not going to get pushed the same. You know what I mean? The mm-hmm. fairness in streaming is that if it's a good song, people people are going to, you know, they get to they can dive into that. It, it doesn't have to have a million dollars behind it to make it go. And I think that that's beautiful. I agree. Because, I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, takes, it puts the power to me back into the people's hands. The yeah. You get to see what, I mean, the artists do with the music they create, but you get to see what people are actually consuming. I don't mm-hmm. think radio is a good reflection of that. But, anymore. you know, I will say with streaming, they do put you, like, on certain playlists. Yeah. And there are definitely ways to make sure when you have, like, a random playlist going, certain artists will be on those playlists, mm-hmm. you know, and then it does make your streaming numbers go up. Because I discover a lot of music like that. I might not necessarily have chosen right. to listen to something, but, but you'll just let a playlist right. go. That's what oh, no, I agree, are. but you, when you got Drake having nine out of the top ten records, that's just 
people consuming the music. Yeah, you that's know? true. That's, that's very true. That's insane. Now, yeah. we see that Chris Brown was on the single, Guilty. Yeah. Yes. So, have you guys always been on good terms? Obviously, we know you were signed to him previously. We see that he's on the album now. Yes. Was there ever a period of, we're not sure if we cool? or? I mean, I think that, you know, I think, first of all, I think that Chris is extremely, um, he's, he's honest and vulnerable about his life. And mm-hmm. I think that that's amazing. And I think that anytime. For one, when you have a great deal of love for somebody, um, and I have, that's my brother to the day that I die, um, I think that I'm always very respectful of, of periods and peace and, and periods and times that people go through in their lives, and I like that to be the same way in mine. And I think that there was a period of time where we weren't, you know, we didn't speak as much, but I don't ever take things like that to heart. You know, people got their lives they dealing with the same way I'm dealing with mine, but um, to be able to, you know come back together on Guilty, my heart was very happy, to say the least, because, um, like I said, with music, it's just, and he and, he and I and our voices, it's a magical thing. You yeah, know y'all I mean? are great together it's on magi- records. Thank you. It's a magical thing. So, um, yeah, I'm just happy that we're here and, it's, and he's on the project. And, you know, he gave me a run for my money on that record with, <laughs> with his voice, and I love it. You know? That's how y'all know y'all really partners, though. Like the fact that y'all don't have to talk every day, I can go spells without talking, but still yeah. pick up right where y'all left off. Yeah, man, I'm like that with all my friends though. Like we out here, everybody out here getting to it and working, and I don't take it personal, you know. How many of your exes hit you up during the pandemic? <sighs> <laughs> um, that many. <laughs> <laughs> that many. <laughs> Yeah. What you up to? <laughs> you know, what you, you know, what you know, what you doing? You know, what you, nigga, the same thing you doing? Nothing. You know what I mean? Nothing. Hopefully. <laughs> like, hopefully, child. Listen here. Did you? So you might have missed your blessing. And the reason I know, I'm gonna tell you why I say that because what? during the pandemic, God had made all of us be still. I loved it. So we all had to sit down and yeah. realize what was important. So some yeah. of these dudes might have been like, "Damn, yo, seven was the one." I mean, I'm I'm cool with you know a lot of my exes. I don't have issues with them. It just mm-hmm. it didn't work out with us at that period of time. Maybe it'll come back around. Maybe it won't. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm cool. So I'm, did the pandi- pandemic give you any thoughts about? About Some any of those old exes? About my exes? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't look back. Nah. I was, was going to ask you, when you play your album for your family, <laughs> do you have any reservations at all? Nah. Her mom, <laughs> no? Her no. mama cool. Listen here. Y'all know Karen fine ass. Hi, mommy. Um, No, my uh, my family, we've been, in, we've been doing this a minute together. So... They know they separate my art from from you know I go home. Was it difficult for them to do it at one point though? You know what? Yes, Karen, I'm gonna tell on you. You said put that pussy on this. What that That part? Oh my God! The first time I said pussy on a record, my mama had a heart attack. You know, (laughs) I mean, do you have to say the p word? I said, what's the p word, mom? You know the p word. I said pussy, mama. Yeah. You said that to your mom at what age? I mean, I, I was I was of age. Well, okay. very well of age. But no, my mother understands. I'm a songwriter. I'm going to, I like to write, you know, I like to write the, you know, the truth. How you really talk. That's else. really how you talk. I mean, we talk I like I feel like, like your mom would have been like, you know, I did that to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The, my mom was, my mom was, my mom a real nigga in real life. Um, you know, she really is. <laughs> she really is. No, she keeps it all the way 100 with me, and I appreciate her. I don't know that. why we act like our parents didn't have a life before us. How do you think we got here? How do we get here? Like, come on. Don't make no sense. None. Nah, at all. So what's this? So how do you feel now about having done everything for yourself independently? And this is a comp. And the album, by the way, is great. It's very, I feel like, cohesive and well put together. Thank so you. how are you feeling about this and being independent? Would you want to <sighs> sign to a label, or are you good like this? Um, I think I would. I want my own label. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I I would want to do that. I want my own label. So all of y'all label people that's watching, just know I'm on my own label. Um. I want my own label, but I like the freedom. I like this freedom. It's nice. I don't. I don't think. You know. I don't know. I like the freedom. But if if put it this way, if I felt like I was gonna be surrounded by the right creatives, I would. I would. I may. I would consider going back into a major. But I would have to be surrounded by the right creatives. You know what I mean? That like, you know. I don't just. I. I want to. I want you to actually have an opinion about. Right what this is and I want to value it and I want us to have and I want you to make me better and I, you know I, I like those types of environments so I would go back in but how do I feel I feel amazing you know what I mean I feel amazing at the end of the day it's 
art it's just art at the end of the day you know what i mean people are going to take it and apply it to whatever they choose to apply it to and i just hope that you know that the project helps people better express themselves you know what's success for seven because i mean you know you've been making a living all these years yeah what's success for you right now mm, success for me right now is um definitely people loving the project i want them to find the songs that speak to them um i can't wait to go on tour i can't wait to get back on the road um, I want to dive into acting more. You know what I mean? I want to do that. Um, I really want to write some country music. Mm. <laughs> I want to write country music. Uh, Great storytelling in country music. What? They're amazing. Like, they're so amazing. I want to write country music. Um, and I want to do way more collaborations. I want to do a lot, lot, lot of collaborations. Um, I want to do, a, like, a lot of hip-hop collaborations. Like with who? I want to do a record with Drake. That's my, that's like, because I just feel like we would like, you know, we would verbally spar and I like that. You know, would cry together. We would cry right. together. You know? <laughs> it would have all no, the feels. All the it. feels, all, you know, all the emo, you know, I think that, um, and, and melodically, I like the fact that not only is, you know, he going to say some shit, but his melodies, the melodies are crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Well, let's get into yeah. a record off the album. What you want to hear? Not guilty. We play You got to play already. Nasty Girl. Nasty Girl. Shout out Bia Bia. That's my bitch. Right. Um, well, nasty Girl. It. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is my new baby, y'all. Seven Straighter, Nasty Girl, featuring my girl Bia. And we appreciate you for joining us. <laughs> we need this song Thank in you. rotation, by the way. This yes. song is a vibe for real. I it's, love this song. Thank you. It's such a vibe. It's a sexy little record. Well, I wouldn't know who to talk to about yeah, putting songs to in to rotation. About that. <laughs> I don't even know how Every that works anymore. Every you gotta put it anymore. in the mix. Like, uh, you gotta I don't even know how that works anymore. I'm so guilty. Thank I wish, you. I wish I could tell you how that works, but I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, it's Seven Streeter. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.